Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for being with me this afternoon. We're going to outline for you what I think is an example of a epidemic across the United States. It's gangs and guns. And I am going to take this one case that my general crime deputies and supervisors solved as an example, but you can duplicate this if you watch the crime trends all across the country. Our detectives, who are simply the very best, started this investigation beginning March the 11th. We had 38 car burglaries in the South Lakeland area, and they were committed in three what I would call from middle class to upscale neighborhoods. Thirteen burglaries occurred in Reflections West, eleven burglaries occurred in Christina Oaks, and fourteen bur burglaries occurred in Highlands Crossing and Mission Hills. Interestingly enough, during these 38 burglaries, many of the car doors were left unlocked. They actually broke the windows on others. But they would bypass valuables because they were looking for guns. Did you hear what I said? They would actually leave valuables or credit cards that they could be tracked with because they were after guns. They were incredibly organized. They would focus on vehicles that had pro-gun stickers on the car. They would look for any sticker that would give the indication that this person is super conservative, liked guns, and that would be the target in their neighborhood. It's interesting that in addition to this, we suspect that they committed a lot of burglaries in the Bartow area. We're working with the Bartow Police Department and they're following up at this time because when we were interviewing some of our suspects, they went, well, what about the Bartow crimes? And we said, well, tell us about that. And they figured out really quickly, we had no idea what they were talking about, so they quit talking to us. Seven firearms were stolen, seven. Now I want to underscore that all of those firearms that were stolen went to the street to commit other crimes. We recovered only two of the firearms. We, we, we recovered the other two firearms in commission of other crimes. Five of them are still outstanding. And I would suggest to you there's going to be robberies, there's going to be carjackings, there's going to be drive-by shootings by these stolen firearms because people didn't lock their cars or didn't take their guns into their homes at night. One thing that I want to point out is look at these gangbangers. This is who's walking around in your front yard after you go to bed and go to sleep at night. And because you don't lock your car or you don't take your gun in the house, they're breaking into your car, they've got your gun, and they're standing in your front yard. Now marinate on that for a second. That's what we call a problem. So at the end of the day, instead of you having the gun in your house to protect you from them, they have your gun in the yard where they can attack you. Fortunately, in these cases, none of that occurred. Now, of the six, we were able to do gang enhancements on four of them. But all of these folks are certified pedigree gang members. Now, anytime we can enhance the crimes, then the penalty phase goes up. For a, a third degree felony becomes a second degree felony, a second degree felony becomes a first degree felony, and there's enhancements in the sentencing guidelines as well. In some of the cases we worked, we found people that discovered burglaries 
And instead of dialing 911, they were calling Crime Stoppers. And we weren't hearing about the crime for hours. Listen, folks, if you have an instant crime, something's happening now, that's not the time to call Crime Stoppers. You need to dial 911. I've made this statement before, and this is part of what I want to talk about. We're not going to allow kids to, to kill kids. We're not going to a, allow young men to kill young men. We're not going to allow gangbangers to shoot up other gangbangers' homes, their houses, their mom's houses, and make no mistake about it. We have a countywide joint at the state level and the federal level, a gang task force, and we are focusing on you, gangbanger, because I would rather you be alive in prison than dead on the streets. You can't reboot life. They watch this stuff on video games and they hit reboot. You can't reboot a life when someone's shot and killed. So, we've got a full court press on. You understand that. You like basketball, you know what a full court press is. We have a full court press on to arrest the gangbangers. So let me introduce you to some of our gangbangers. And I'll start with our field general, Kingston Pr Pringle. Here's his picture. He was the man. He coordinated where and how they hit. He was very structured with his details. He was the youngest one. He was 16 years of age when this was occurring. And yet he had 22-year-old kids following him, 21-year-olds doing what he said. He taught people into joining him. We know that he attended Kathleen and Bartow High School last year, was a junior. He's, he wasn't enrolled in school at all. But now he is in school. He's in the Polk County Jail School. That's right. He's in juvenile lockup, waived to adult court, and I make him go to school. I'm now his daddy and he's going to behave every day. He's going to go to bed when he's supposed to go to bed. He's going to get up when he's supposed to get up, and he's going to go to school every day and behave, and that's where he is now. We've charged him with two counts of armed burglary, 19 counts of burglary of conveyances, 12 counts of attempted burglary, possession of a firearm by a minor, two counts, Possession of a machine gun. Did you hear what I said? I spoke clearly. I want to articulate. He had a machine gun. So what's a machine gun? Well, they take a sear or a switch and they put it in a handgun and all of a sudden you pull the trigger and it makes it fully automatic. We also have charged him with directing the activities of a criminal gang. He has 75 total charges when you look at the ups charges that we put on him. The state attorney's office is working hand in glove with us. He's waived to adult court. And you think, bah, he just looks like a kid. Here's the other picture of him. Here's the street gang Kingston Pringle. That's right. Do you know why he doesn't have any dreads? Because he heard we were after him and he cut them off. We found them in the garbage can of his house when we served the search warrant and took him into custody. He was trying to change his looks. He is, an, is a criminal mind, an organized criminal mind. He is a leader among men. It's a shame that he couldn't put that to good. But that's not all. Let me show you another look of Kingston Pringle. There he is. He will shoot you 
a lot. You're looking down the barrel of one gun and you can see the hollow point projectile. You can see the two guns. That's right. That's Kingston Pringle. Don't be mistook by his clean cut haircut that he created so that he would look young and like a kid. He got rid of his dreads that make him look streetwise. But in addition to this, let me show you a video clip. And in this video clip, I want you to see that he's pointing a handgun at infants with a green laser on it. Watch this. Now I want to show you that once again. Let's, let's rewind it so I can show it to you again because I don't want anybody to miss this. I want them to get a full understanding that he's practicing shooting people on infants in his mama's house. And he will shoot you just as quickly as he practiced on these babies by pointing this laser at them. I want you to see this again because he is in school. He's in thug school. He's in gang school. He's in shooting school. And this is the kind of people that's going across the state and across this nation, shooting up houses and shooting up their ops, as they called, their opponents. Let's look at it again. complete with an extended mag and he turns the gun sideways just for gangster effect. And we'll provide that to you because we want you to show it. We want people to see it. We want people to know that this is what we're trying to stop. Now I've met with our, our Attorney General Ashley Moody as well as Eric Hall, the DJJ Secretary and as a result of that meeting, and I've met with Sheriff Gualteri, we are creating and are going to request of the legislature this year legislation that will make it toxic for a kid to have a gun, for a kid to do something like this. I mean toxic, and what do I mean by that? We can't probation these people and send them to the streets. We've got to send them to programs and have intense therapy why they're incarcerated, why they're locked up for a period of time so they understand this is not a video game. There is no reboot to this, that people die. And I appreciate our Attorney General and Sheriff Gualteri, who's my partner on the Florida Sheriff's Association, um, Legislative Committee, in fact, he's the chair of our committee, as well as Eric Hall supporting us, and we are working with the legislators at this time. It's about saving their lives. It's about sending an early message so that somebody with a stolen gun is not out on unsupervised probation at 14, 15, 16, 17 years of age, but or being appropriately trained about the dangers of these firearms. But let me move on for a second. Here's Javin Sterling. He was 18 at the time. He's currently out on bond, wearing a GPS monitor. This is a sad story. Blue, as his nickname is, was playing basketball for Weber. He was from Lakeland. He had no criminal history. He was groomed and recruited by Kingston Pringle, who was much younger than him. When we went to Blue's house 
and talk to his parents. They said, no, it's not blue you want, it's this other kid. They go, no, it's blue. No, blue's not a problem. Blue never causes a minutes problem. He's in college playing basketball. Not anymore. He's not in the student. He's not in the school. He's not playing basketball. He's charged with 11 counts of burglary of a conveyance, 10 counts of attempted burglary, 14 counts of criminal mischief, one count of grand theft of a firearm, and he's got 40 total charges with his gang enhancements. That's right. Now, when we were approaching, he called Pringle for direction. Hey, the cops are here. What do I do? What do I do? Pringle says, don't tell him anything and ask for an attorney. He went from no criminal history to a long criminal history because he joined in to be cool on the street. And then there's E.T., Eldred Kellum. He's 22. We've dealt with him for years. He's 22 years of age. He's got a criminal history of 18 felony misdemeanors and four violations of probations, 22 events at only 22 years of age. He's been arrested for burglary, for robbery, for stolen vehicle. There's currently outstanding warrants for him for, in Highlands County and Okeechobee County. We've charged him with 18 counts of burglary of a conveyance, 12 counts of attempted burglary of a conveyance, 21 counts of criminal mischief, two counts of armed burglary, one count of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. He's got 63 total gang enhancement charges and one directing a criminal gang. He's locked up in jail. We know he's not breaking into, any, into anyone's house at night. And I want to make something abundantly clear. Why these folks are locked up, they're not breaking into your houses, they're not shooting up kids, they're not shooting up other houses, they're not committing other crimes. And that's where we need to have them. In juvenile, we need to have programs where we can make sure we get to them early on and try to straighten their life out before they end up in prison for a very long time. And these folks are going to prison for a very long time. And then there's Taurine Summerall. He's 22. They, he's called Flea. He was arrested by the Bartow Police Department. He's the fence. He was selling the handguns on the street. He told us he normally gets about $300 for, hand, for a handgun on the street. We charged him with possession of a firearm by a felon, grand theft, directing criminal activity, possession of fentanyl, MDMA. He also got gang enhancement. Of course, he's unemployed other than street crimes. Now, think about this. He bonded on those charges. You follow what I'm saying? He bonded. So he's facing some really significant charges. Did I tell you he was arrested again for robbery while he's out on bond? Look, these folks aren't going to change. They're criminals. They're active, violent criminals. He's out on bond from all of these charges, and he's committing a robbery. I'm not finished telling you about old Flea here. Here's Flea's social media. We do homicides and burglarize. That's part of this. We do homicides and burglarize. And I think Taureen said it all. That's what they do. Homicide and burglarize. And then there's DeAndre Guilford. Draco, he was arrested by the Bartow Police Department. Of course, he doesn't have a traditional job. He's a street criminal. He's been arrested for carrying a concealed firearm. That was stolen from reflections. There's currently an open warrant for him because, see, he bonded out, and he violated his pretrial conditions. Think about this. He made bond, and he's out on the street right now, and we're looking for him again because he violated his pretrial conditions. 
Do they pay attention to the criminal justice system? If you don't lock them up, if you let them go, they don't care about the charges against them. He's running the streets, and I'll promise you, if I got legs in my pants today, he's out committing crime. There ain't no doubt about it. We got to find him. Call Crime Stoppers. Text Crime Stoppers. You can make cash, and we'll put him back in jail, and then we'll keep him where he needs to be. That's what it's important to understand. You can't look at hardcore gangbangers and burglars. As they say, we murderize and burglarize. You can't look at them and think, well, that's just a normal young person. No, it's not. They're hardcore criminals, and they commit crime every opportunity they get. Then there's Eric Denson. He's 18. He was a driver. We charged him with all of these charges. The state attorney's office could not get past probable calls and no bill them. But I want to tell you something, okay? Before, when we went to arrest him on these charges that were ultimately no billed, and our detective stopped him and arrested him, we didn't know at that point that he just shot up a house. And the city, it happened in the city of Lakeland. The city of Lakeland subsequently has charged him with one count of shooting into an occupied dwelling and three counts of attempted first degree murder. Our detectives risked their lives, didn't realize they were at additional risk because he had just shot up a house before we stopped him on these other charges that were ultimately dropped. So while he's in jail, we find out that he's made a shank in jail. So we've charged him with introducing contraband. We also have worked with the state attorneys and we're at state attorney's office and we're able to re-up some charges. So we've charged him now with carrying a concealed firearm, possession of marijuana, you know that low-level nonviolent drug everybody wants to tell you about, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Folks, he was 18 years of age. He's facing three counts of attempted first-degree murder. Now, law enforcement officers stand in the gap between good and evil. This is evil. These are gangsters. These folks are shooting up the opposing gangs. They're intimidating the gangs. But they're coming into your neighborhoods to steal the guns out of your cars that you won't take inside at night. Now, I love y'all, but I'd sure love it if you would take your guns in your house at night and lock your cars so that you didn't give them to these folks who are going to take them to the streets and shoot each other. And if you happen to get in the way, they're going to shoot you too. Folks, we've got to make a difference. It's not all right for kids to shoot kids. It's not all right to shoot up houses. Another gang that we arrested, the guy for burglary, pointed a gun at a neighbor who came out and discovered the burglary. We arrested the juvenile, 13 years of age. Four months later, he shot a Lakeland police officer because he was out. He should have been in a program where we were teaching him how wrong it is to have a gun break into houses and shoot law enforcement officers. We're not going to accept this. We're just not going to accept this. I've worked with the community as well. Our community supports us arresting people that are shooting up the community. Now, our crime's still at a 51-year low. But I'm telling you, there is a gang war, an episodic gang war that occurs on the streets across this country today. And if we don't figure out how to get a grip on it, young men and women are going to die who shouldn't. I applaud my detectives 
who did their part. The state attorney is going to do their part, and we need the community to do their part. Okay? Any questions? Yeah, we've had the gang task force in in effect probably six or eight months, and I I would tell you that we've seen a reduction in drive-bys. We have seen a lot more people go to jail, but I'll give you an example. The gang task force was maybe their second or third week in. We were doing high fives. In one week, we had taken two stolen guns off of the street from the gangsters. So on Friday afternoon, we're high-fiving. On Saturday night, another gang broke into one neighborhood and stole four guns. So they stole two more than we were able to take off the street. So at the end of the day, it's until we send a message, and we're sending that message. We've got a lot of people locked up that were running the streets. But the data, we've got to give the data, we've got to, we've got to have enough data to compare it to last year. And we will do that, and I'll be talking about that too. But I applaud all the police departments, FDLE, U.S. Attorney, Attorney General, and certainly Brian Haas, our state attorney, who I consider just the best in the business for all of their cooperation. We're going to keep people safe. We're going to keep the kids safe. And we're not going to let people steal stuff. But you've got to give brother a hand here. Take your gun in the house, please, at night. He's a natural leader. Unfortunately, he's leading for bad. He's got charisma. He's got personality. I'm certain they, they, they would follow him any place to do anything. I just thank the good Lord he didn't ask them to go out and kill someone because he's the youngest of the group. He's the most organized on the, of the group. He's intelligent. He's a di dyed-in-the-world criminal mind. He plans these burglaries out. He recruits people to do it with him. It's part of the gangster culture. And he's, he's remarkable at being a criminal. Understand that gangs are, they flow back and forth, okay? This gang we think has about 10 or 15 in it. But they may stop this gang and join up with this gang over here. So it is a constant, it's constant chess game to figure out what gang they're a member of. And, and understand, I'll, you know, I don't want people going, oh my gosh, what's going on in Polk County? We're arresting them. We got, the, we got this thing as much under control as anybody can with a set of rules and laws we currently have. But they're shooting up every, and you take the big cities, they're shooting every night. They're shooting houses someplace in this state and across this nation by the hundreds every night. That is a... They look at the video. They make their own rap videos with the guns. You know, I mean, there's a reason. There's a reason why, you know, this is some of the, his social media posts because he's bad. He's bad and he's got gangs. That's why he does these videos here. It is cool to be a gangster and shoot the ops. And that's their quote, not mine. It can't be cool anymore. And then just thirdly, what, what is his legal future? I mean, he's a minor. What is he going to face? What program is he going to be in? And how much time can he serve right now? He jumped through the juvenile system. He is far more dangerous than the juvenile system is equipped to handle him. He committed real man's crimes violent man's crimes, he's going to get a real man's sentence. Charged as an adult. Charged as adult. 
he, you know, package him up, put a stamp on him. It's, if he's convicted and he has a right to a jury trial, if and when he's convicted, we're putting a stamp on him and he's going to Florida State Prison. Did his mom know about the video or anything? Was she aware of it? I don't know. But I can tell you it's, one, it's not uncommon that the parents are totally out of the picture. Two, they don't look at their, their gang stuff. Or three, some of them hide it from their parents. We deal with some parents who are really, really concerned. When we started this gang task force originally, we went around and knocked on the doors of the parents or the guardians and told them, hey, you keep your kid at home, you get guns away from them, don't let them have guns, or we're going to lock them up to keep them alive. We had some people shut the door in our face. We had some people go, I, I'm doing the best I can, but he's 16 years old. He, he guns and runs, and I, I can't do anything with him. We had one parent say, thank God, if you arrest him, he'll be alive and safe in jail, and my boy's going to be dead if he stays on the streets. I want the gun owners across the United States to bring the guns inside. This is not a Polk County alone event. This is a nationwide gun event. Look, y'all know I'm a big Second Amendment guy. You can't own too many knives or too many guns. But you've got to be responsible. And leaving them in your cars for somebody to break in and steal and have your gun to then shoot it, shoot it up on the streets is not acceptable. There's, it's not against, it is not a criminal violation. Okay, we've got one other video we, we're going to play. If there, I, any more questions? I want this video, I want everybody to see it. Now, I want you to think this is your nice house, and you're in bed sleeping, watching the sheep, you know, <laughs> dreaming. Oh, I got this wonderful wife laying beside me, and my girlfriend doesn't know it. <laughs> you know, and this is what's happening in your front yard. This is what's happening in your front yard. motion light turns on, they don't flinch. Some of you leave the key fob in your car, so they'll just fire up your car and take that. trying to get in the car, motion light comes on. Now this is not a new <coughs> news flash, but it is, it, is a good, it is a good training tool for the community. If you're coming home tonight and it's 11, 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, and you see kids meandering around in the neighborhoods, that's a clue. That's a clue. There's ordinances that say if you're a juvenile, you can't be out late at night, call us. And if they're just kids meandering around in the neighborhood, no harm, no foul. 
We'll scoop them up, take them home to mama and daddy and say, do you know where your child is? But this is the people that are wandering around like they own the neighborhoods and they're breaking into houses and they're looking out why others break into the houses. Did you see them even flinch when the motion light came on? They're experts. It ain't their first rodeo. But got to help. Anything else? Y'all have a great weekend. Please put this out and help us fight crime. Hope your favorite college football team wins unless your favorite team is playing against the Gators because this year they need all the help they can get. See you all later. The sheep thing? You see, see at night when you're having trouble sleeping, you count sheep, right? Jumping over the fence. When I have trouble sleeping at night, I count criminals going in the county jail. Yes, sir. Yeah. See y'all later. Heavy. <laughs>